with action, stakes, and beautiful animation that outdoes itself is Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. First things first, damn this was worth the wait. This dropped towards the end of last year, week after week. The only reason this video and script is being made now is that I knew with a show and hype like this that I wouldn't have been able to contain my excitement for it on a weekly basis. Getting to see these beautifully and amazingly choreographed fight scenes in a binge session was so worth it. I also loved how consistent the animation quality was for this season. Season 1 was nice, but this one blows it completely out of the water. For instance, the fights in Jutsu Kaisen are at selling point, and here they're taken to another level. Everything from how the camera constantly pans around and in and out of the fights and how the color changes and contrasts and everything else in between. You can make a good argument of any of these being the best fight in the season and I would most likely agree with it because of how it was done. I know that there's a burnout and abuse that the MAPPA studio employees went throughout the course of the season and it's truly horrible that what they went through. I would like to thank them because without them we wouldn't have gotten this beautiful experience which is the season. I like how the show eased us into Jujutsu Kaisen by having us see Gojo's backstory and his past with Suguru before they stopped becoming besties. Their friendship was really wholesome. Gojo was definitely a lot more cocky back in his younger days but you could also see how he cared for Suguru and how he was learning to care about other people more often. It was interesting to also see how Ghetto was the moral compass between them and how even Gojo got some of his current ideals from Ghetto. It's beautiful how they had it like this from the beginning until Ghetto went through some experiences that messed with his mind and broke him. After his conversation with Yuki Sukumo, he realized that there were two sides to him. There was a version of him who was growing to hate non-sorcerers and the version of him who was trying to negate that. Eventually, the former version came to take over him soon after. This occurred while he was out on a mission to stop a curse from ravaging a village. Ghetto found out that the villagers had kept two sorcerer girls in a cage, blaming them for the curse's actions. Witnessing the cruelty of non-sorcerers, Suguru snapped and murdered all the villagers, freed the girls, and it became an evil curse sorcerer. Then, to also see Gojo confront him afterwards about it was heartbreaking as you could see the pain in his eyes and hear it from him. Mind you, Ghetto was always the one to keep check on Gojo and his morals, and to be the compassionate one. So for this to happen completely flipped his world upside down. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Gojo vs Toji was a nice matchup and a beautiful way to really kick off the new season. Everything from Toji's badass entrance and demeanor to him catching Gojo and Suguru off guard to Gojo using hollow purple was such a treat to see. Also, RIP Mekamaru. He may have been a traitor, damn did he come in clutch after his death. If it wasn't for him, the communication during the Shibuya arc wouldn't have been as strong, for instance him letting know about Gojo getting sealed, helping Yuji in his fight with Choso, and even directing Toto to him. Mekamaru did his thing. You could see how much he cared about his fellow classmates by sending them off far away so that they wouldn't be caught up in the crossfires of the Shibuya incident. I've also got to say that the pacing of this season is a 10 out of 10, especially from when Toji was introduced in the beginning. Honestly, it got to a point where I'd be like, surely they're gonna slow it down, and boom, they don't. They do have a few flashbacks here and there, but it never feels like a drag such as in other shonen anime. I'm looking at you, Naruto! Another thing I loved about the season more than the last one is that they didn't pull any punches. Sure, in the last season they had a few deaths with Junpei being the most memorable one, but it never truly felt like, at least for me, that there was truly any danger for the main characters. Here, they turn up the threat level to a crazy degree. They're not afraid to let main characters die, villains, and really put them through some trauma. Also, we're not going to skim over Gojo vs Ghetto's crew. In the first season, it merely felt like Gojo was just playing around, minus him taking on Hanami with Hollow Purple. But here, we got to see the true display of his power, and damn, it was worth the wait. Gojo may be cocky, but after his display of power here, he deserves to be. For crying out loud, this man walked up to Hanami, the guy who required all the Jujutsu High students from both schools to fight him, and killed him just by sheer force of cursed energy walking up to him. Then, he has one of the coldest moments when he looks back at Jogo and says, You're next. I also love how realistic they are with the character expressions, because Jogo thought the same thing that you and I thought while watching this. Screw this, I'm running. Because <laughs> ain't no way in hell any sane curse or being could think of stepping up to Gojo after that massacre he did to Hanami. Also, I liked his walk that he did behind Jogo right after killing Hanami. I'm not sure about you, but this gave me similar vibes to when Sasuke was steadily walking behind Danzo and Naruto like a hunter salivating their lips, eyeing their prey. Choso was kinda cold, but even he got checked by Gojo. However, I will give credit where credit is due. These curses are smart as hell. 
because they use the transfigured humans courtesy of the piece of trash Mahito as a good cover to distract Gojo. Then they also had the humans from the above station fall down and die instantly. Unfortunately, the final nail in the coffin ended up being Gojo's reunion with Ghetto, or what it used to be Ghetto, shall we say. I also liked how the music ended up complementing the characters and certain scenes. For example, whenever there was a fight or you had devious characters like Sukuna or Mahito on screen, the music would become really intense or really eerie. On the other hand, whenever we had a flashback or fun moment in the show, mainly in the first three episodes, the music would be really calm and joyful. It may be small to others, but little details like that definitely make my viewing experience that much better. The voice acting was phenomenal. If this is me glazing the show, then I'ma glaze it all day, baby! <laughs> From the traumatic moments with these painful shrieks and cries to these maniacal voices was truly something great. Mind you, I have the Jujutsu Kaisen volumes from 0 to 14 and I read a good amount into the Shibuya arc before it got animated. So I already knew that this arc was going to be amazing. But to relive some of these moments with animation like this, great voice acting and music, not just generic stuff, definitely makes me glad to be alive and to experience this. People may make an argument for the story not being the strongest, and I agree. But I believe Jujutsu Kaisen's story is a lot more character driven similar to Dragon Ball Z. But the development of the characters, the attitudes, mindsets, and strength definitely make this all the more better. For example, one of the best cases in this comes in the form of Yuji vs Mahito. By this point, it's their second time fighting each other and Mahito already put Yuji through a lot, with him killing Junpei, his friend, in the last season. This time around, Mahito puts him through a lot worse. He kills one of his teachers, Nanami, and his friend, Kugisaki. Two main characters dying within a few episodes of each other? Yeah, I told you they weren't pulling any punches here. <laughs> Keep in mind, both of these deaths happen right in front of Yuji too. Talk about insult to injury. Yuji then becomes enraged as any normal person would be. However, he's then reminded of what Nanami would have told him, which is to keep calm, especially in situations like this. So instead of keeping up the typical trope of raging the entire time, he cools his head a bit and relaxes so that he can think through his next moves and figure out a way to defeat Mahito. Yuji then ends up getting despaired part way through. Luckily, his brother, Toto, comes in to save the day. He gives Yuji that much needed wake up call to find his answer and to stop moping around. Then they start to fight Mahito together and man, it was hella dope. Anytime Yuji and Toto are on the screen together, you really know we're in for a treat and explain that Gojo used on him and the crew earlier against spy characters instead. Yuji may not have gotten the chance to kill Mahito himself, but I'm glad that Ghetto, or the being controlling him, erased him from our screens. Seeing Sukuna wreak havoc on everyone was insane. From Megami to Jogo, he spent no expenses and we got some of the most appealing looking scenes because of him. My favorite moment slash fight for sure was Yuji versus Choso. While I think the Mahito fight helped Yuji mentally, this fight was just pure badass and in my opinion, the best visuals and animation in the entire season. This fight stemmed from the fact that Choso won in revenge on Yuji for him and Nobara killing his brothers last season. Everything in this fight was perfection, my guy. Choice's blood art and techniques have never looked better. The hand-to-hand -hand combat was amazing and the expressions were great. I also love that the creator spared no expense at the amount of damage that Yuji would take during this fight. Keep in mind, the only reason Yuji even remotely stood a chance against Choso was because of Mechamaru and his quick thinking. The best part of their fight comes when they're in the toilets and they stand right in front of each other with what looks like a martial arts pose. One has red coloring around them and the other has blue. To top it all off, the water starts flying everywhere, making this look like the coolest wallpaper ever. At this point, I'm not even sure if the third season of Jujutsu Kaisen will be able to top this for me. The bar has been set so high that their only option is to either match it or give it some time and some money so that these animators will be able to bless us with their amazing work at a rate which doesn't cause them to burn out or be abused. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what your favourite part of the season was. I'm curious as to see your opinions. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for whatever else I drop. And this is Black Sugar Lovin' out.